bring in Coach Must now. Uh, Bob, get started, please. Okay, hey, hey, Eric, how you doing? I'm good, Bob. How are you? What's what's your shirt say? It's a Texas Rangers shirt. Okay, go, go, going with the winner. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, hey, how, how's Trevin responded in practice after playing, you know, pretty significant minutes the other night? And what would be the plan for him against Purdue? Yeah, so TB's done a great job. Um, you know, I think his, his intensity and workload has – um, has increased, uh, you know, especially yesterday. So I, I, I don't think there'll be a heavy uh, minutes restriction on him at all, you know, to be honest with you. I mean, I think that, um, you know, probably, you know, 15 to, to 25, to, you know, we're all, Safe. we feel comfortable playing him. Did you say you kind of froze up there? Did you say 15 to 25, it sounded like? Yeah. Yep. Okay. And, and then, um, you know, it's funny, he's 6'10", but I guess he's giving away like five or six inches to ED. Um, what, 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 kind of what's the plan? So the guys were saying it's, it's obviously got to be team defense, even if you're playing man-to-man. -man. Just kind of what's – how do you prepare for a big guy like that? Well, I mean, that's one of the reasons that we are so excited about playing Purdue is you're talking about um, – you know, maybe the, the, you know, the, the, the hardest player in college basketball to game plan against uh, because of his size, because of his skill level and because of his teammates that play surrounding him. Uh, Coach Painter's done a great job of getting shooting um, to surround a, a player that's got great skill interior. Um, you know, so I would say that this prep, to prepare for uh, Coach Painter team, they're tough. They execute a lot of continuity. I would say that they're for sure way ahead of where we are today, and and um, they're probably way ahead of a lot of um, other programs. Um, and then you add in the fact that they played four games overseas with a bunch of returners. Um, you know, this is a team that. That, that, that's going to present a lot of a lot of uh, you know things that we need to try to cover between now and and Saturday afternoon. And how did this game come about? Did did you call Purdue? Did they call you? How how this thing get put together? Yeah, Coach uh, Todd Lee had been talking to the Purdue staff, and then Coach Payne and I have a relationship. Um, you know, just through the Nike um, coaches things that we've done, and and. Uh, you know, from afar, I've always had great respect for, you know, for how hard his teams play and how well coached they are. And, and uh, from an execution standpoint and, you know, certainly to get the chance to to play somebody um, in an exhibition game, to be able to play a team that has a chance to win a national championship certainly uh, makes this game, you know, way more meaningful and way more special than just a normal exhibition game. When you look at lessons that can be learned um, once this game is over. I might have a couple more. I'll turn it back to Mike. Thanks. Jackson. Hey, Eric, uh, just curious, uh, coming out of this uh, game against UT Tyler, you mentioned kind of wanting the team to be a little bit more physical and uh, I I saying that you're going to work on that in practice this week. Uh, How'd that go? How have they responded? And like, in what ways really are you looking for some more physicality maybe against Purdue? Yeah. I mean, I think what, you know, when we, you know, it's yesterday was, you know, day, you know, day one of the, of the practice week. And, and uh, I thought it was really good practice, a very physical practice, uh, you know, Purdue, obviously the physicality with, with Edie inside um, the physicality of number four, um, Kaufman Wren, those two guys are physical. Number one, first is really physical as well. Um, zero Gillis is another physical player. And then their guards are just so scrappy. So we, you know, we've got to have physicality one through five positionally um, as we prepare for, for Purdue. Um, and then certainly, 
you know, the physicality on the glass, because they do a great job um, when the ball goes into uh, number 15, Edie. They, they do a great job of cutting with force to offensive rebound from their four spots. So uh, defensive blockouts become extremely important as well. Um, but I thought yesterday we, you know, we had a good, a good practice as, as far as preparation. But again, we understand internally that Purdue is just based on the returners and, and roles and understanding expectations. They're probably way ahead of, of, of where we are <laughs> not only today, but where we will be, you know, even two weeks from, from today, but it's, it's a great game for us for sure. And I think when we, we spoke with you in August, I think you mentioned just like lessons from the Texas game last year helped you in the NCAA tournament uh, way down the road. I'm just wondering, like, are there any specific questions you might have like at the top of your brain that you'd like to kind of maybe learn about the team after the Purdue scrimmage? Yeah, well, I think one Jackson, you know, to be able to play a team that's got an interior force like, you know, Edie and is a, you know, potential player of the year. So it, it's, it's twofold in the preparation. Number one, uh, we're playing against a center that might be unlike anybody that we play all year, uh, but we need to have, um, you know, some background, some body of work that we can refer to later in the year. Um, and then uh, from a scheme standpoint, what Purdue's going to do, it's going to, it's, it's going to, we're going to be able to really dive into our preparation because they have so many returners. And so we can build a scouting report um, off the fact that the coach is returning, the players are returning, their star players returning, uh, their star point guard, number three, Smith is a returner coming off a, a fabulous freshman year. Um, you know, so I, one, we want to kind of like, where are we uh, against a, a top three team in the country like this early in the year, how do we stack up with a great rebounding team? How do we stack up with uh, one of the top three pre premier teams in the, in the country? Um, what a great um, opportunity uh, for us to learn a lot about ourselves, which I mean, we're, when, when we walk out of Bud Walton on Saturday, um, you know, at, at about, 5 30 or 6 o'clock we're going to know a lot more uh areas that we've got to get better leading into our first game curtis hey coach i know it's a, a group effort to defend a guy like Edie, but you know makai kind of stands out as your your biggest most experienced body inside i imagine he'll get a, a healthy dose of that matchup just what do you make of this kind of challenge for him in the preseason and, and maybe what growth have you seen from him from, you know, the UConn game to now? Yeah. I mean, I, I obviously, you know, Kai went through a, a, a stretch this summer of, uh, of being injured. You know, he missed a, a good, a good part of our, our off season with a broken foot. Um, but he did a great job uh, continuing to lift weights with our strength coach Um you know, I, I think in this per particular game, um, you know, Chandler Lawson will get an opportunity to to guard Edie and and uh, obviously Kai will will get an opportunity to guard him. Um, Jalen Graham, um, you know, if if he's able to suit up, would 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 possibly get a chance to, um, you know, to go in and guard him, maybe Bayfall. So there's a lot of different guys that might get the opportunity, but certainly. Um, Kai and Chandler are, are the two players on our roster that have um, the experience maybe of defending some of the more physicality guys that, that you know, that, that we could see. Because it's not just Edie. Again, Kaufman Wren is, is really, really physical as well um, inside and, and was their leading scorer uh, in their four games overseas. So um, and, they'll, and they'll play two centers together. Um, you know, there's a possibility that 15 Edie will, will play alongside, you know, Kaufman Wren. And then we have a decision whether we'll match up big to big or whether we'll go uh, with a big and a small and, 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 and add perimeter shooting and dribble drive game against uh, maybe two big. So those are some of the things that, that we'll look to experiment with once we get 
uh, into that 40 minute experimental game. And you've touched on these guys a little bit, but I wanted to ask you specifically about Braden Smith and Fletcher Lawyer, a couple guys who did a lot for that team last year as, as true freshmen. They've got a year under their belt now. Just what's your take on that backcourt? Yeah, both. I mean, it's a, it's it's as good a backcourt as you're going to face. Uh, both guys can make threes. Uh, obviously, Smith's got um, great defensive awareness, and his, his steal numbers show that. They're both really, really high, high basketball uh, players, obviously lawyers, fathers, a long time NBA uh, coach and executive. And, and uh, you know, lawyer presents problems because he understands uh, passing angles uh, from an offensive standpoint. He understands how to move without the ball to get himself open. Um, just a really, really phenomenal backcourt. And then number 55, Jones, the transfer um, from Southern Illinois. He's a guy that, that can can take high volume of threes, take high volume field goal attempts in his minutes. Uh, you know, so, so those three guards in particular, um, you know, can all present problems for you. Touch. Yeah. Coach, you mentioned Graham just the other day. I know it's been a couple of days since the exhibition. Just how's, how's he doing? Uh, he tried, you know, yesterday, uh, it was, you know, I don't know. It was okay. Um, we'll see today I mean he's hopefully he's you know I mean he tried but you know he was not going game speed or at the at the rate that that you know that we I mean, we're not going to play him if he's like he was yesterday I can I can tell you that gotcha and I, I think I know the answer to this but I mean you played Texas last year you got Purdue this year is this something you'd like to do every year play a high profile game like this as an exhibition yeah, you know, I don't have the, the the stuff in front of me at all, Hutch, but, um, I mean, go all the way back to Nevada when we played Washington. Um, you know, we scheduled Washington because uh, we felt like, you know, we were going to get a whole dose of 40 minutes of zone, which is what we got. Our Nevada teams needed uh, to improve against the zone. Um, they had Thibel, uh, who's a heck of an NBA defender, uh, at the top of their zone. So there was, I don't know how many years ago that was, we were one of the first teams that, 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 you know, understood the rule of how you could navigate and have a division one team play you rather than a secret scrimmage, which I, those are absolutely unequivocally meaningless. Uh, the ones that I've been a part of um, actually a waste of time. The ones that I've been a part of, um, I remember, San Francisco beating us at Arizona State by 49 points the day after Halloween, um, you know, meant nothing at all to, to our team or anything. So I, I we like the dress rehearsals, I think, too, because of the fact that, um, you know, changing rosters, I think that, you know, it's important. Um, I think this game's really good for Coach Painter and Purdue because – we're going to have a great crowd. Um, they're going to draw crowds wherever Purdue goes. They're going to be sold out probably every game that they go on the road uh, because they're ranked so high and because of uh, the returning group that he has and because they have a national player of the year candidate that just doesn't come into opposing buildings often. Um, so I think this game is going to be great for them too to play an exhibition game um, in front of a, a crowd that, I mean, right now, I think we're at 14,000 seats that are sold. That's not counting uh, the 3,000 seats that will be held for the student body. Um, you know, so that's 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 going to be really, really good for their team, too, to, to play in front of a good crowd as well. And you mentioned the dress rehearsal aspect of it. Is that applied to like, you know, the, the scouting reports? Cause I mean, we, we know all about your extensive scouting reports and you got new players. Does, does this kind of help them with, with that, you know, in an exhibition game? I mean, I think so. I mean, it, it, you know, we certainly don't want to go into our first game and, and all of a sudden it's, it's, you know, culture shock on, on the preparation and what the expectations are of understanding and opposing teams, uh, second and third option, um, in trying to take away something. So yeah, this is going to be trial by error for, for a lot of our, you know, new guys, because this is, you know, this is the first time that 
we're going to really dive into what we're trying to get accomplished both offensively and defensively based on what the film shows us. Uh, the Division II game the other night against Tyler, we, we basically only looked at their personnel. I thought we took a, a huge leap in understanding uh, player personnel, and, and I thought we did a great job taking away, um, you know, the individual skill that, that the Tyler group had other than the fact that we left, left their left-hander, um, you know, get middle on, on, on the side of the – block that, that we were supposed to take away. But that was a good learning experience for, for Bayfall to understand that if we say a guy goes over his right shoulder and his left hand and wants to shoot a jump hook on the right block, you better take that away. And um, so that's a, you know, it's good for a guy to experience that and maybe get taken out of a game when, you know, when the scouting report's not followed as it's supposed to be. Scotty? Yeah. Eric, I'm curious, what have your impressions been of L to this point in the preseason? And, and is he doing, I guess, the kinds of things that you'd hoped for when you got him? Yeah, I mean, L and I had a lot of talks leading up to this on, you know, look, he's put points on the board at the Division One level. He's put points on the board junior college. He's put points on the board against Power Five teams on the road. You look at what he did in, in, in his conference last year against great competition. You know, now how do you become a more well-rounded player? I think L's excited to play around um, pieces that he feels like he can deliver the basketball to and and guys can either catch and shoot or make plays. And so, um, you know, his um, his growth of, of growing into, into more of a true point guard, I think, is something that he wanted. Uh, and something that, you know, that we want. And look, his Louisville experience was great for him as well because, I mean, he played a lot of minutes. So when a, when a player gets to experience all those minutes um, and you do some things that are really great and you do some things that you want to work on and you do some things that maybe helped your team and then some other things that maybe, you know, you got to get better at to help your team, I think that, that, that Louisville experience of, of getting all those minutes uh, in such a great league for him is really, really beneficial. We saw a little bit earlier, Tremont got put on the Jerry West Award watch list. I don't feel like we've talked about him much this preseason, but what have your thoughts been on, on him and, and just how important will his play, I guess, defensively be against Purdue's backcourt? Yeah, I mean, T-Mark's aggressive, uh, physical, confident, Played for a great coach in Kelvin Sampson. Uh, probably, you know, as good a defensive um, program in the country. Their defensive schemes are a little bit different than ours. So I think that he's um, he's still in a, in a in a growing, learning, development stage of how we want to play team defense. Uh, but I think as an individual defender, um, you know, he's as good as anybody in the country. Um, you know, I, I, we feel like he can rebound a little bit more than he has um, in the small sample size that we have so far. Um, but really, really excited about the offensive growth that, that we've seen throughout the course of the summer as well. I mean, I think he's um, a much improved shooter based on uh, his individual player development stuff that he's done on his own um, since the time he got on campus. Bob, final question before we get coached down to practice. Yeah, Eric, in your college experience, have you faced a guy like E.D., or do you have to go back to your NBA days, or um, is there somebody you could compare him to you faced in the past? I mean, we've gone back to some of the notes that we used when we played against Shaquille O'Neal, to be honest. I mean, I did pull out um, some of the old scouting reports just because of, um, you know, the crowd that you want E.D. to play in meaning, you know, the five guys on the floor, how are you going to make him feel a little bit of pressure? Um, you've got to obviously have more than just a plan A to defend his post-up game, to defend his high-low game. Um, you know, they they're he does a great job of, of uh, like faking like he's going to go set a screen or receive a screen and then get a lob pass um, and actually – one of our players sent clips of that, which really 
was a huge positive to have one of our returners pull some clips and send it to our coaching staff. That means that they're studying on their own. Um, you know, are, are we going to trap him? Are we going to dig off of him? Are we going to, it's hard to front Edie because he'll post up right in the middle of the floor instead of the right block or the left block. Um, and when a player posts up right in the middle of the floor, um, causes a little bit more problem, um, you know, than, than just a guy on one side of the floor. So uh, how are you going to do that? And, 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 and the three players that are not guarding the passer and not guarding the post player, how are, how are those three players, where are they going to be positioned on the floor uh, to either A, help on Edie's catch, or B, stay attached to some great shooters, uh, you know, who have proven they got great, great range from three-point land. And we haven't even talked about a guy like 25, Morton, and the way that he's improved as a player for Purdue. Anything you want to say about uh... – I know it's next year, but they announced the San Diego tournament. <laughs> very, very, very excited about that uh, opportunity to play um, in San Diego. When you think about the teams that are going to be there, um, great field, um, super, super excited. I'll be able to um, see my mom, that my mom will be able to, um, have the team over to her house for a good meal. And um, I'm kind of excited to show the guys like, hey, this is where I grew up. This is the outdoor court that I played on. You know, here's the beach that we used to go surf on. So I'm, I'm completely excited about going uh, to San Diego. We've had some good, um, some good weather MTAs when you look at, you know, Maui and, Nassau, Bahamas, and San Diego. That, that's I'd say three for three wise for our fans that travel with us and stuff on on these things because we have a lot of people going to the Bahamas that went to Hawaii and hopefully we'll have a gr good group in San Diego. That's three pretty good destination spots to go watch some basketball. Now we got to get the media members to come to these spots. <laughs> Thanks, I'm just saying. <laughs>